Hi all. As we all know, one of the main reasons markets fail is because of the existence of negative externalities. One of those negative externalities is pollution, and pollution is quite a drastic one, and a major one at the moment. When externalities exist in a market, economists would argue that that's a reason for government intervention. Okay, the market is failing, the government should intervene to solve it. Ronald Coase argues something else. He says, when there are negative externalities occurring in a market, that's often because there aren't property rights allocated to solve the existence of these negative externalities. He says if there were well-defined allocated property rights, the market would solve itself and negative externalities wouldn't cause a major problem. So let's study this point in a bit of further depth. Consider this scenario. You've got a river user and you have a farmer. The farmer uses a fertilizer to grow his crops. When it rains, that fertilizer gets washed into a nearby river which then causes the algae and the plants in the river to grow because the fertilizer are nitrates, plant food. And as these plants grow, the river, the river becomes kind of polluted and not very nice to use for leisure purposes by river users. Okay? So we've got a negative externality in the form of pollution affecting the river. This is shown on this diagram. So we have the marginal damage curve and the marginal benefit curve. The marginal damage curve shows um, the harm to the river user as a result of this nitrate being uh, run off into the river. The marginal benefit curve shows the extra benefit the farmer gets from using more nitrate. And on the axis we've got the actual externality on the x-axis, the nitrate runoff. And on the y-axis you've got the marginal effect of the externality. So the actual effect this externality has on both parties. Okay? The reason both are downward sloping because eventually there comes a stage where we can't do any more damage to the river user because the maximum damage has been done. So using more nitrate won't actually have any effect, any more damage on the river user. And for the marginal benefit curve, there comes a point, which is point A here, where the costs of using more fertilizer are more than the benefits of using more fertilizer. Okay, which is why that's downward sloping as well. So, in a normal market without property rights, without any kind of bargaining or anything like that, the social optimum we know it will be Q star, where the marginal cost is equal to the marginal benefit. However, without bargaining, without property rights, the farmer would choose to produce a point A, maximizing his total benefit, maximizing his welfare, which is at point A. That will mean that at point B we can measure the damage that that causes to the river user. Okay? So by not producing at point C or at point Q star here, by not producing at that point where marginal benefit equals the marginal cost, the river user loses this whole area of welfare. Okay, so just the total area underneath the marginal damage curve in between where the farmer is choosing to produce and where the socially optimum level of production is. So that area is what the farm the river user loses, which is ABCQ star. I'll just put that up there. So without property rights, that's how much the river user loses. Okay? Now, let's assume property rights are actually allocated, okay? And we're assuming here that property rights have no transaction costs, that they're well-defined, okay? And they're enforceable. These are all key uh, assumptions that we make. So, assume property rights are given, and they're given to the farmer. So, the, prop the, the property rights allocated are in the hands of the farmer, which means he can do what he likes to the river. Okay? And he now has the right um, to do whatever he wants because he now owns that river, essentially. So by doing so, by allocating rights, all of a sudden this medium of bargaining is allowed to happen. Okay? So the river user can now bargain with the farmer over the certain level to produce. Okay? How would that work? The river user would prefer the farmer to switch production levels from point A to point Q star. Okay? That's what he'd prefer, to go to the social optimum level. Okay? That would mean he would suddenly gain this amount of welfare. So while he was losing that without, all of a sudden by moving, he gains this entire area of welfare. Okay, so river user gains A, B, C, Q star. So that entire area is now gained by the river user. Okay, but the farmer loses out by changing production levels. Okay, less is produced, he gets less benefit than he would have done before. And that's measured by the area underneath the marginal benefit curve which is lost, which is A, C, Q star. That's the area underneath the marginal benefit curve that the farmer has lost. So he loses 
A of doing red. So he loses A C Q star. Okay. So the root user gains this whole area. The farmer loses a smaller area, this little triangle. It doesn't make much sense for him to cut back. I mean, why would that actually happen? Well, the reason it would happen is because bargaining occurs with some transaction of monetary payments. So the river user would pay the farmer to actually change production levels. And how much would he pay? Well, consider the river user is gaining more okay, than the farmer is losing. Therefore, if the river user pays more than what the farmer is losing, so greater than ACQ star, okay, so he pays more than what the farmer is losing, but less than what the river user is gaining, both parties will be better off and we can reach the socially optimum level of production. Okay? So what we would call that is a Pareto improvement. So this is a solution where both parties can actually benefit. Efficiency occurs in the market, we're producing at the socially optimum level, without any need for government intervention at all. The market pretty much solves itself, and the externality is internalised. Okay? Both parties are better off, we call that a Pareto improvement. Okay? Maximum efficiency now in the market. And that occurred solely via the existence of property rights. Okay? So that's how it works in practice, but, as we said, it depends on no transaction costs, okay? absolutely no transaction costs, the property rights being well defined at the start, so then the farmer in this case knows exactly what it means when he holds his property rights, and it also um, assumes that there will be perfect information in the market. If there is any kind of imperfect information, we won't get to the socially optimum level. We might move towards it, but we won't reach it, so we need perfect information. Okay? Another key point to evaluate is that while it depends, the effect of this depends on who has the property rights in terms of equity. Here, the farmer has the property rights, so he benefits, because okay, he's going to gain a payment by reducing uh, production, which is more than the loss. Okay? Whereas the river user has to pay. If the river user was given the property rights, then he would benefit. So equ equitable concerns is something else we need to think about too. All right, so there we go, we've got coast theorem there internalizing externality, a market solution instead of government intervention. You can also try doing this on a diagram when the property rights are given to the river user. That will be quite an interesting thing to do as well. And if you think you can do it, by all means, let me know. Thank you.